Beardy and the Beast, The Second Wall. This is a placeholder intro song. Welcome to The Second Wall, binge-free zone where we look at a series and discuss it in small chunks. This time we are looking at Joss Whedon's sci-fi classic, Firefly. We can be found on most podcast and social media platforms, a full list of which can be found at beardyandthebeast.com. Please watch the episode and then join Drew and I in the mess as we explore the verse. What are you saying? Are you saying she's a witch? <laughs> yeah, but she's our witch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um... <laughs> I really like this episode. It's okay. Um, it's the hardest part about this episode is knowing it's the final episode. Well, and that's the problem because all it does is pre present questions. Yeah. Um, it is nice to have a river guided episode. Yes. However, there's nothing. Because this is the last episode, there's nothing that's going to be resolved through the series, right? Unfortunately. <laughs> and I, th I honestly, I think that's one of the reasons why this series does have the enthusiastic following that it does. Because, mm -hmm. simply speaking, when you leave it on, so, uh, I was going to say, on such a down note, but that's not true. Uh <laughs> When you leave it with so many questions and no answers, that leaves people wanting to know more about these characters, the uh, the universe, the story, and we both know for a fact at this time, like they wanted to do other stuff, but there was no comics, there was no follow up movie, there's nothing of that. It was just and done. Yeah, and which is a shame because again, I think like this goes. It sets up the questions right and not in a J.J. Abrams mystery box way. <laughs> like, I feel like, no, the, you can see the progressions of where they want to go with the story. Yeah. Um, so. Um, but l let's go on assuming that there is more to it um, because it's hard to have the conversation <laughs> going. Oh, but we'll never know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's there there's answers. There's actually a lot of answers in this, and I feel a lot of confirmation of my my suspicions. Yes. Um. um so I I do agree with you about it. Um, answering your suspicion, I'm assuming the suspicion you're talking about here is River just being the hyper observant. Yes. Yes. Um. Though they played with it very well, and they also established that the idea of psychics isn't unheard of mm -hmm. well it's um, uh it's essentially a person coming to grips with something they don't understand mm -hmm. because as as much tactics as malcolm reynolds and the rest of the crew has it's an exclamation it's an explanation it's the best explanation it's the best explanation <laughs> for <laughs> Uh, what they're being presented with. And yes. it, it was funny that the the grounding during that meeting was Wash. Yes. With his joke with the, I don't know, it sounds like science fiction. And they, of course, had the joke, like, <laughs> we live in a spaceship, hon, which is a meta thing. Like, I. Yeah. But his reaction made it serious. And yeah. It's only only thing that he was worth in this episode, but his reaction of, like, and? Yeah. Because that's life, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think the interesting thing with that, because like, I like that Wash is trying to, you know, bring that back. But the fact that Simon couldn't answer Mal about them poking around in River's brain. Mm -hmm. It's like he saw something there. And I mean, I guess that's the thing. It's she is a reader in a way. Mm -hmm. she's, like she's, again, extremely hyper aware. And, you know, it comes across as psychic. Uh, especially when you mix that with the opening scene where she's telling what people are actually thinking or likely actually thinking. Well, it's the thing. It's I viewed that 
And I was where I was wondering if you were going to push push back on me on this because you're going with what I was going to say. Hmm. Um, one of the things that you'll notice if you think back to it, um, it was essentially a projection of the inner thoughts of each person, right? Yeah, could be mis misconstrued as psychic reading or something. Mm. Until you realize that she was having a hallucination, right? Yes. Um, but that's that's not the key difference that struck me. Um, if we were to say definitively that she's hyper aware and can read even the smallest of body movements, vocal quivers, um, and intuitively understand what something somebody's thinking with only a little bit of interaction. Um, she would be able to intuit what someone was saying, and if she's hallucinating, she can project that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, one thing that I noticed that struck out to me, all the people that she encountered, like who didn't who didn't speak to her? Um so the one that I noticed for sure was um, was Kaylee. Yes. And I'm glad you noticed that one too. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this one? <laughs> um, it is because Kaylee's thoughts and Kaylee's heart are on her sleeve. She's not somebody who holds something back. And you can also see that in in the situation that she was in, the I think she would have seen a normalization between the occurrence that happened when they were doing the um, strike on Niska's fortress mm -hmm. or space station. Um, so there's nothing left to project. Yeah. Everything about her is already known. Yeah. Uh, so there's um, no blanks to fill. So that's how I saw that. Yeah. The um, the note that. I wrote was she had no impression of Kaylee. Um, it's showing that Kaylee's just the, that honest. Yep. And it, it and it's not that the others are dishonest. It's as you said, she's literally not holding anything back. She mm. is just who she is. And another thing that I noticed, and I had to rewind it a few times because I, I'm fairly certain it was River who said it, but when when she had the gun. And like everyone's yelling at her. I'm pretty sure River called out to Kaylee. Oh. I could see that. Yeah. Oh, I need... someone someone said Kaylee, and I'm pretty sure it was River. I I actually need to find out. Uh give me a sec here. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up on my side. Yeah. Cause if that is correct, that makes so much sense to me because that's an extension of the the strike, right? Strike yeah. on this goes. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Um, in fact, I think it's the same gun. Yeah. Um, so just to fill it out, there's going to be an edit there, but I just um, uh, confirmed Devin's suspicions. Indeed, she river in the scene where she was holding the gun at the end of the hallucination. Um, when she started becoming aware, she called out for Kaylee. And it appears to be the same gun that um, occurred that she was holding and used during the strike on Niska's uh, space station. Yeah. It's interesting because at this point, we've seen Simon as her rock. Yep. And this is, again, kind of showing that integration of the crew. She is actually calling out to someone else um, for, for that help. Uh, so she's very much taking in the entirety of the crew. Uh, and, and we see that throughout the episode, even with all of the misgivings she's perceiving from people. Well, and that's the thing. Um, there is, there's like a recurring theme about this episode, but this follows um, through to it. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about it in a little bit, but essentially... It's not only an extension of that previous scene, she's also calling out to 
the heart of the ship. Yeah. Um, in this case, because she's so smart and she, she even says it, she understands, but she doesn't comprehend. The only way that she's going to be able to pull in any type of comprehension, if it's not in a, at an inte- intellectual level, it's going to be on an emotional level. Yeah. So it's kind of, uh, there's a double meaning there. Mm-hmm. It, that's and that's such a good line. I, I love that. I understand, but don't comprehend. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's clear no one else quite understands that. But I know for a fact I've had things like, no, I understand what what's being said. I understand the mechanics around it. I don't comprehend mm-hmm. what's happening. It, it, it's such a clear. It, it's such a big difference, and it doesn't surprise me. Someone like Mal doesn't get that. Well, I think, I think it's, he, I don't think he got it, but I think that's the best way for her to express it to him. The yes. way that Mel expresses himself and talks, it, that also, that sounds like a turn of phrase or a method of speech that he would use. Mm-hmm. So I think she's communicating with him in the way that she thinks would be, be best to understand. He obviously doesn't. But, yeah. and there's just like, to kind of continue uh, debunking the psychic aspect, um, we know that River does a lot of things without realizing it, mm-hmm. or that's shown, or um, she might think she's doing other things. When she was listening in on that conversation that was being had by the crew, she was standing on a high mounted catwalk on the bars directly under the room where best she could observe. Yeah. Um I think she has the capabilities to do it, but I don't see the motivation or intention for her to do it as a character. Mm. Instead, I see her doing that naturally to know what's going on um in her kind of And she might not actually know that she's doing it, is what I'm trying to express. So instead of a situation where she's reading and she can hear their thoughts across the ship, her body is taking uh, hold so that she can try to figure out what her environment's about. It's an instinctual thing, is what I'm expressing. Yeah. Um, I, I, so I've got two aspects that I want to go from this. Yeah. Um, one, one goes back a little bit, but um, I'll go to the one that goes back a little bit. Yep. I'm... I know it's it's clearly a hallucination, mm-hmm. but it it almost comes across as a little bit more than that to me. Uh, I'm reminded of other aspects like the little sisters in Bioshock Two, or um, the Pyro in Team Fortress. Yes, she's literally just seeing the world this way. Uh, so I'm not a hundred percent certain. Is it hallucination or is her perception being, well, I mean, still hallucination, but is it her worldview has just been twisted that much? Like, that, to, this is, without it actually being natural, this is the way that she naturally sees things. Yes. I think that's a good observation. I'm not sure if I agree or disagree, but it's <laughs> definitely a good question. Yeah, there's not enough evidence to go around it, but it's just, I immediately got flashes of, of those two characters in particular. Um, I guess the psycho in uh, Borderlands 2, they kind of do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Or it's just... And I mean, one of the big things with that is those are all characters with, you know, their brains twisted. Mm-hmm. So um, it's a little hard to say. And unfortunately, it's the only example of it we get. Uh, but it, it kind of goes back to what you were saying about the... It's almost like it's a play. She doesn't know necessarily what she's doing her body's just kind of doing the right thing and it could be that uh, yeah. warped perception of reality that's doing that um that scene there in particular was a scene that solidified to me not psychic same when she was listening uh it, it's and hyper observant is absolutely it because there's no way you were hearing someone through that hall without being that hyper observant mm. Well, I mean, uh, like, 
even if it's less soundproof than we suspect, and I agree with you, I still think it's a strong indication. Yeah. I also, they try to, they try to dupe you though. Um, when she's watching Zoe and wash mm -hmm. and the, the first thing I saw when she was like, seeing that is like, I've seen people that I've been so attracted to do, to do. I've gotten a full body shiver. Just like I've collapsed face <laughs> first <laughs> because she was cute. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, I've seen I've seen people that I've been so attracted to that I've gotten a full body shiver, and um, I see her reaction to watching Zoe making out as being an extension of that kind of feeling. Especially if she is hyper aware, I think the body can make or the mind can make the body do things. Yeah, um, it's like how when you talk about being sick so much to somebody, they actually get sick. Yeah. It's their body makes it happen. The mind makes it happen. Yeah. It Yeah, that's definitely one of the big dupes. Um I think the other there's one other dupe that I saw there. Mm. Um and that was in dupe is in air quotes here. Yes. Um this is the what the hell is up with Shepherd book? Mm. <laughs> Right, because it's clearly, I mean, again, it's not like we haven't talked about, there's something else there. Uh, I don't know how much evidence the characters within the ship would necessarily have, but you throw in the fact that she's hyper aware, she's going to be picking up on the things that the audience is probably picking up on that no one else in the, well, in she's, the crew would. Well, she's hyper aware, and she's also... Um, shown in the past that she has been given privy to a whole lot of documentation that she's memorized. Yeah. Like she knew the exact model number and configuration of the Firefly just by standing on it. Yeah. Like, um, standing in it. She didn't even see the outside, right? It was just yeah. the, the inside of the hall. Um, so it's entirely possible if there's some type of um, documentation in this one, they kind of make you to believe like, Oh, uh, when I saw this episode originally, I was like, Oh, is Shepard like a bounty hunter or is he an assassin or something? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think if the Alliance was manipulating river and grooming her to be some type of hyper assassin or some type of, um, manipulating entity they would probably feed as much information they have and if they had documents about shepherd book she'd probably glean them yeah um i mean i'm just talking talking hypothetically i i don't have any foreknowledge to river's experience at all so i'm just like it that's a possibility yeah i uh, and that's why I put in the air quotes of it being the, is this a reader or is this the hyper aware? Um, just with all of the other evidence, I'm going to, like, I'm just leaning to, like, she's seeing the same thing the audience is seeing. Yeah. That we're having questions. Again, even though no one else in the crew really does. Well, they could also. They really vocalized it. They, they also showed her intention to have some type of understanding of Shepherd Book's faith. Mm -hmm. So she could be comparing what is said in that faith to his actual actions and his lack of empathy for those who may be guilty or not. So what is it? Uh, don't give a half a hump if you're innocent or not. So where does that put you? Yeah. So she could be intuitively um, seeing the difference between the projected faith and how he actually acts in various circumstances as they meet people and talk to people and his interactions with them, right? Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, he's definitely with a crew that's not innocent. No. <laughs> and he's um, not trying to save them. No. So, so maybe it's because yeah. he maybe it's because he feels like he's amongst his kind. Yeah. Um not righteous, not evil, but not good per se. Yeah. 
Um, one, I actually had a question about the hallucination. Mm. Do you think there's um, symbolism of the fallen leaves and the attachment to fall and storytelling? Because mm. you're the one who introduced me to this concept, the spring, summer, fall, and a story. So if the hallucination is hallucination of fall, because there's all the dead leaves on the ground, right? Yeah. Um, would that apply to her character arc and having a fall within it? Well, so I mean, again, looking at this is this is still around that mid-season finale point, like we were mm. talking about last episode. So, in a way, this is kind of the fall of the autumn of the story. Yeah. Uh, so there, there's definitely that aspect there. Um, and I mean, we are going to see that it's, it's interesting because I, I think we did see that fall with river and the crew's perception of her, yep. but we also saw it. We also saw spring happen at the end as well. True. So I, I do think, yes, there is a bit of that, but I don't think it's necessarily the meant to be the focus point. Mm. Uh, of the episode like it would be in say like when we're talking kaguya and, or uh and stuff like that Friggin the movie you really like uh with the drugs uh requiem requiem yeah. yes yeah yeah um okay neat yeah i just wanted to get your perception on it because i noticed it and i'm like that could be a thing but it's 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 movie knowledge deep enough that it kind of goes beyond um what i understand in stories yeah like i said i definitely think it's something that could be there but i don't think it was meant to be the same type of focus point it, okay. it was i think it well it could be a representation of her mental state too that's where i'm thinking more it's more the and that's where i go back to that is this a hallucination is she having a mind break is this how she just sees the world yeah. uh, because that again raises all the questions well she uh, she does yeah. traverse the ship this is this is going to be some like weird fantasy nonsense but she trans <laughs> she does transverse the ship as if she was a forest nymph in like an enchanted forest mm -hmm. the way that she moves and she dances and it's entirely possible if you take that perspective when the leaves start falling that's when she starts having that mental break and she doesn't understand yeah. what's going on yeah. um i'm not saying that's what it is i'm just saying it's an analogy <laughs> no and, it, and it's a good one i mean we know that like because we don't really see her move through the world much mm. but the times we do see her move through the world and this also goes to you know you know the next episode when we actually talk about serenity <laughs> um, um that moving around like a forest nymph works mm. most of the time when she we see her move that's what it is she's a dancer she flows um and they expressed it several times yeah and it was times. it um not only intellectually because they also said um simon said this about her intellectually but also physically in the way that she picks up um, physical aspects of things it comes as naturally to her as breathing air does to us yeah uh, so which which is again just makes it interesting because it's like again that's why i can't shake that that feeling that i keep referencing it's it's like part of the grooming mm -hmm. like this is just how she is like to not know the difference between a, a twig and a gun and like trust me they weigh <laughs> a good deal different especially considering there was like a desert eagle i'm pretty sure that gun weighed as much as she does <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah it just makes it goes like how far did they break her and like and what else did they do is like for the meds to just 
like her basically becoming immune to any type of meds that are given to her with it like that. That's actually the only line I didn't understand in the show. Mm. Cause yes. they haven't expressed anything, uh, physiologically aside from, excuse me, the fact that they messed with her brain. Um, but I mean, you know what, if, if her brain has been manipulated and enhanced in like a hyper science fiction way, it could be that because she's hyper aware when she, she can hyper analyze the symptoms she's having and then have her brain start producing the various chemicals that would break it down quickly. Yeah. Which, or that could be part of just the, what they've done to her as well. Right. I, I just mean that it would be a great thing if you're trying to create, you know, a hyper warrior or an assassin or an operative or something, because yeah. it means that if they're affected with knockout gas or a poison, they should be able to push through it and keep yeah. on with the mission. Right. Yeah. So it, it fits. Would make sense. So speaking of operatives and assassins. <laughs> Talking about um, Mr. Jubal early? Yes. So a few questions that, that immediately come to mind with um with early there. Do you think he is a product of something similar to what River is? Uh no. Okay. Um I have some outside knowledge. He is just a bounty hunter. Okay. But he is a sociopath. Okay. Um, <laughs> so um, he's definitely worked in and out of uh, Alliance territory, doing jobs for the Alliance and probably for people not of the Alliance. Um, it's kind of like... Boba Fett, if Boba Fett wasn't, you know, defeatable by someone waving a stick by accident. Um, <laughs> but he okay. is definitely like, it's it's like they took the textbook definition of a sociopath out, out of the show Dexter and like made him a space bounty hunter. Mm, I guess. I think they could have done some things a little bit different with that. I didn't like his character at all. Well, so... Getting rid of your outside knowledge, if you can. Because <laughs> um, there's a lot of riverisms with him. Uh, I found uh, just the idea of, like, of not understanding, you know, basics like human biology and, you know, like, the, the amount of times, like, isn't that weird? <laughs> isn't that odd that it's not? this way or that way and um the one that really got me is, is like so are you a lion it's like am i a lion well i never thought about it. it that's the part that made me go it's like is he messed up too is he broken in a similar way um i read it as um like whedonisms but the only way that i can explain the way that i perceive this is by Talking about the the overall arcing theme that I saw, hmm. which was the mind versus the heart. Okay. So in this case, um, we have River who's acting on heart, and then we have a sociopath who's only acting on mind. Hmm. So it's him being detached from um, conscious and heart and those type of feelings. Whereas... Hmm. River having a, I mean, it was caused by uh, a mental break, um, but is in a very emotional, emotionally distressed situation. And that's kind of how I view the episode. Mm. Um, and just to put some enhancements on that without talking about the topic of Jubal's Jubal early yet. Um, this was also expressed in Simon versus Kaylee in the uh, hallway scene. Mm. He went with his mind. She was going with her heart. We had um, Inara versus Mel. Inara going with her mind. Mel going with his heart. Um, right. So this was the repeating motif that I saw. So that only reinforces why 
I think he was just an odd sociopath. Mm. The reason why they gave him riverisms is so that we would draw those comparisons. Mm. No, and that and that makes sense because um, it's definitely definitely the mirroring that I was seeing as well. Mm. Uh, it was just the some of the so overt riverisms that that made me have to question that because and i guess it is an extension of just that being overly almost too analytical and not being able to go it's like well is it still her room if she's not there Mm -hmm. Uh, but it also sounds like a question that river would ask (laughs) but the thing is i i think she would ask it um from a more a heart orientated way she would say something like uh, um like this house or this this box contains my feelings and is it still mine if my feelings aren't there she would make more of a emotional comparison yeah um it's at least that's what i think of uh, the way river communicates yeah yeah and that's why she says like um i don't have any on hand but like when she was weighing on the casket and she was kind of like Oh, what, what was what was the actual phrase that she used? But it was essentially like being like uh, eternally asleep and not feeling anything. So it was yeah. always like an emotional outreach because of that detachment from what they did to her. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I, I can for certain whether or not he did have anything do from him. Um, they did illustrate like out of a, you know, it's like 101 student reading a Wikipedia entry that uh, he likes to hurt people. He hurt the his neighborhood animals. Um, yeah, his mom was scared for him, and he got frustrated early. These are all, you know, psych one hundred and one. This is a sociopath thing. Oh, for sure. Um, like I, I don't disagree that he's you know, yeah, sociopathic. It's it's more the, I think going with the psych one hundred and one sociopathy. <laughs> um, sociopaths are very good at initially appearing to blend in Mm -hmm. which makes some of those reactions just not make any bloody sense though it does make his reaction to inara trying to (laughs) talk him down make sense Mm -hmm. i (laughs) it's i don't i don't want to sound like i'm making excuses so i'm not going to say this in any certainty Hmm. um I saw him a lot as just someone who was isolated and had been alone too long. Didn't know how to interact mm. with people. Um, but I agree about Inara when yeah. she's, when she starts trying to examine him and read him, how frustrated and how he lashed out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the only, only reason why he didn't kill her at that point was simply because it would create additional complication. In what he was doing, because yeah. it might create um, a more intense situation that he wouldn't be able to resolve, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, no, that makes sense. And that Inara scene is actually really interesting. I think helps build on the overall idea of of just River, mm-hmm. and in, in a way, Jubilee too, because he's obviously very aware of things too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's. She can just look at someone do that same type of thing. She's got those same reader abilities, as it were. Mm-hmm. Like it's just being that observant. Uh, so I think just kind of seeing all three of those combined really shows that. Um, shows that well. Well, it's in- it's interesting too because in this episode you could almost. You could almost treat Mel as instinct. Mm -hmm. Um, As he's fighting between the two, as he's rationalizing. So we have the representation of a mental state, the representation of an emotional state, and then you have um, a representation of the thing going between the two and reacting based on those. Mm -hmm. And I think Mel could fit in very well there. I might just be projecting her um reading into it too much though i think there's actually one there's one quick scene like kind of a blink and you miss it thing Mm. that 
actually makes me think that could fit with that. Hmm. So, um, once River has Malfrey, uh, immediately afterwards, you see him try to go to the cockpit and then change his mind just before the lights go out the ship. Hmm. So I, I think that's exactly what you're saying. Cause his instinct is going to be, now I'm getting this Goram, <laughs> Goram yeah. guy off my ship. Um, and it was just such a quick thing that like, it's nice. And it's good to see him, you know, trusting in river, which doesn't surprise me. No, no. Well, but... the, the thing is he knows how smart she is. Yeah. <laughs> like. Mel is the second, the third best on the ship at reading people. Of yeah. course, starting with River going to Inara and then Mel. Yeah. Um, I I think that he knows that he can trust the plan as uh, configured by River. Yeah. I think there's nothing about him that would stop if it was a valid plan that made sense that would yeah. result in the least amount of harm. Yeah, that's exactly it, right? Like, it's a good plan. Mm -hmm. like, no one's going to see that plan. Well, I mean, it's not really that great of a plan. <laughs> it's it's not really in. It's a solid plan. No one's going to get hurt. There's no risk of that. No risk of Simon until he goes and messes up his sister's plan. Mm. Because he's got more balls than everyone thinks he does. <laughs> <laughs> and frickin' he's fit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, what's he gonna do? Man? No, you're gonna... I mean, the only thing that could have messed up the plan was early coming out of and facing the other way when he's climbing out of the hatch. Mm. But he also has no reason to believe that there's anyone around to do anything. He's incapacitated them all to his knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right? So gonna catch him unaware i'll tell you what though acting from everyone in this episode was top notch mm -hmm. this is like the pinnacle of acting from every single person in this except for i wasn't i'm not super keen on uh jubal jubal early um it's it's because the character that would be a hard one to portray well um yeah. so i can't give any credit or negative um, spin on it, but we'll start. We'll start with the least impacting. So, Washoe Jane. There wasn't anything big from them. However, they acted and reacted in the exact same exact way you would expect them to, based on the character archetypes that um, they've developed over this entire time. Yeah, and it they were all they all portray, portrayed it without a hitch. It made perfect yeah. sense. It was exactly as it should have been. It's like it, everything has a place, and everything is in its place. Yeah. Next one we could probably go to was Simon. I think as as an as an actor, he was kind of a late bloomer in this series, finding mm -hmm. his character. Um, but. He is expressing it such a way that you can find empathy um, with his character. You, you believe that his character would act this way and be this way, uh, aside from the standard Whedonism jokes that they kind of throw in in serious moments. Yeah. But that's that weird detachment you have to do in shows like this or Buffy or Angel. You know, it's funny. The Whedonisms that he had there, I actually... Saw those as character growth. Yep. Like that, that was character growth from him. That was <laughs> him understanding how the, sh like, that was him acting more like part of the crew. Mm -hmm. So I actually appreciated it. <laughs> and again, um, yeah, that's what I appreciate about him. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, just kind of shows that, no, he's, it shows again how big those cojones have gotten. Mm. <laughs> the next one. Probably Mal is the next one I want to talk to. I'm kind of going in ascending order here. Yeah. Um, the range of emotions that he 
that Fillion portrayed here. We're talking about devastation when he was being quote unquote rent. Yeah. We're talking about um, the severity of his concern when he finds, found out about the situation with River. Mm -hmm. um, and how torn he was between decisions to the fact that, like, it was a dim room and he was sitting there alone with just a, with a drink thinking about this situation. Yeah. And it was portrayed well. Yeah, um, definitely not something he was going to take lightly. No. Um, and I think the big thing is like him clearly making his decision at the end of the episode mm -hmm. and um, the way he's like, you know, helps River land back on the ship and, mm -hmm. you know, wel welcoming him, welcoming her on board. Like, like it was touching. touching. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like she's a little sister. I really like that moment. Yeah. Um, I did forget about Shepherd Book. I'm gonna throw him in with Jane and them. Yeah. Um, the the malicious intent in the reading the the reading versus the kind of like typically calm outward nature. Mm -hmm. Um, I I found that impressive, but it wasn't to the scale of say Mal or Anara being the next one. Yes. Um. I was very impressed with Anara. It wasn't the same range as Mel, but I felt it more. I thought it was more impactful. I, I think, and it, it kind of makes sense. Like it's, it's, we've seen stuff like that from Anara more throughout the series mm -hmm. in, in little ways that I don't think it comes across quite as jarring when it was happening with her. Um, and again, it was just like, even what she was saying, it's like, I'm a big girl. I can handle it. <laughs> right. It's I lost where it's going. No, it's, um, you can tell in every little scene that she was in, um, excluding of course the showdown with, uh, Jubal's cause that's a separate thing, but still impressive. Right. Um, that she was portraying a character that was torn in every way about leaving and staying. Yes. And it was consuming every part of her body. Yes. Um, like a fever almost. And it needed some form yeah. of resolution. Yeah. And, and, and you, you throw on top of that, like how she was in, in Heart of Gold. Mm -hmm. uh, the episode before, right? Like just that complete breakdown she had. Like it, you can tell it's a, continuation of that emotional step mm -hmm. and oh uh, there's something about the way um uh Bacana portrays the character it's just i know she just embodies it every time i see her in anything else like all i can think of is you're sitting there watching she's... deadpool and you're like i love you inara <laughs> it's true <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for Deadpool to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. Um, Kaylee. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't. I mean, it's it's partially because of such good writing of in that script, like just word for word. There was a structural breakdown of telling someone without telling someone that they have no power. They have no control of what's going on. They can do nothing. Yeah. And I am so impressed with how it was portrayed emotionally um, by Kaylee in this, in this episode. Like, it, you felt for it. It was nearly heartbreaking. Oh, yeah, it, it was... Oh, I was, I felt what, I mean, obviously not what she felt, but like, I could feel her, her panic, her terror, uh, with this. And I mean, she already knows she's, you know, not the most powerful, like mm -hmm. by far on the crew. I, she, she knows this. We, we see that with her talking about going in and, you know, with the Niska thing, it's like, we all went in, even me, but I, and just completely freezes you, know, you get mel's 
I have no problem <laughs> with you not hurting anyone, Kaylee. This is okay. <laughs> right? So even the crew recognizes that that's not, not her. Mm -hmm. You know, to have... Um, I mean, again, we have River calling out to Kaylee for help right at the beginning of the episode. Um, while she's panicking, you see her kind of backing away. She doesn't know how to deal with the situation to just all of a sudden there's someone on your ship, you know, literally saying they are going to do the most unimaginable things to you mm -hmm. that she feels she has to break down and, and, and tell them where River is, mm -hmm. which again, perfectly within her character and her just feeling so bad about it when river's trying to encourage her yeah and give her strength and it's just whew, what a roller coaster with kaylee <laughs> it was it was such good acting that when kaylee was in that final scene and they were playing jacks or anything it was so jarring to me yeah because it was like the level of acting prowess from one scene to the other i'm just like this ca casual tuesday kaylee compared to what we just saw yeah. Jeepers, like I was almost like, you're not Kaylee. <laughs> What'd you do with the real Kaylee? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, just the topest of top notch there. And I mean pro propped uh props to um the writing there. Like the writing there totally broke down a way to make I mean I'm giving props to something terrible and I feel kind of bad about it but the skill in the writing there with just words and some threats it's the perfect way to break down someone who is emotionally driven mm -hmm. you, you start out way up top with a terrible threat um like a violating threat and then you diffuse a little bit and then you give them a way out yeah while reinforcing that you have no power here you can do nothing but follow what i'm saying the only way for you to come out unharmed is if you do what i say and it was just like, again, it would have been nothing without the acting prowess. Mm -hmm. But, like, I just want to give props to the writing of that scene. Yeah. And, and that scene and that reaction gives, it actually gives weight to almost all of um, Jubal Early's um, interactions with Simon as well. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it just strengthens what happens there because now you don't doubt that when he says this this is exactly and even with anara when he says this this is what he is going to do mm -hmm. um right like in just the instant bring back it's like okay well if you don't tell me what's going to happen well i've got your engineer tied up <laughs> yeah. in the engine room and just adds so much more weight to it and you know, it, it adds to Simon's reaction with that too. I liked the fact that Simon got that fire for Kaylee mm. as well. Like the same fire that he has when it comes to River. Again, it's just that expansion of... It's, it's Simon's growth as a character throughout the show. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah. <laughs> it just... So good. It, it comes to head that... The series definitely deserved at least to finish off the first season. Yeah. I've said so many times that this first finger quotation season of Firefly is pretty okay. Yeah. But where it could have gone with four seasons mm -hmm. and no more than four seasons because more than four seasons is terrible. Six seasons in a movie. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's four seasons in a movie you don't need the additional two it's true um <laughs> but uh where it could have gone and what it could have done could have been so impressive 
especially with the transitory nature of some of the characters. Mm. Um, and they could have done some limited floating characters out and having them come back, having them become recurring, etc. Yeah. Um, and it's unfortunate that thankfully we know right now that there is a movie that is a follow-up to the series. There's a comic, uh, there's a couple of comics, but there's one specifically that flows in between these episodes and clarifies a bunch of things. Hmm. But there is, there's something so unfortunate about it because we're finally seeing some people hit their strides. Like, we actually like Simon now. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like pulling for him. Yeah. Um, Jane is like showing complexity. We're wondering what he's going to do. And based on his previous sins, how he interacts with the other people in the ship, mm -hmm. um, we really want to know what, what's going to happen with Anara and Mal and where Anara is going to go and what Mal's going to do. Yeah. Um, it's just, there's so many could be's or could have been's and so many questions we have. And unfortunately this episode just gives us more questions. Yeah. I, I think a big thing, as I said, like the questions we're getting, they're the right type of questions. They're not the, what's the smoke monster. Yeah type questions it's literally it, it's questions that are wanting us to know these characters mm -hmm. right we want to know what happens with them where is this going right the rest of the plot doesn't matter this is a character piece and they build it so well it's it's not surprising that this show has the following it does mm -hmm. because there's just so much there and Again, like I understand where you say it's it's okay. I look at so many shows that have such a bad first season, especially this this era, and I go <laughs> this was already set up way above most of these. I mean, this is much stronger than Buffy season one. Well, I mean, if we do put it in comparison to the era, sure. It does yeah. excel. Um as a story and as compared to some of the things we would actually consider the greats. Yeah. Uh, Breaking Bad, Sopranos, etc. Um, I would give it an, it an okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, even Dexter. I really like Dexter. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, definitely compared to all the other Whedon projects. Um, TV shows and a lot of the other sci-fi except maybe Battlestar Galactica which I didn't really like but I hear it's great yeah. from good sources that I trust I just wasn't for me um, yeah I guess it excels in comparison yeah the, the exceptions I think of in that era I mean I think Farscape is an exception mm. uh, but Again, uh, like when you mentioned Battlestar Galactica, well, that had a previous series. It's not like it yeah. was starting from something. Because I can tell you this, Star Trek The Next Generation, first season, kind of weak. <laughs> it didn't get good until the, the beard was grown. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, um, um, that, that's the whole trope. <laughs> grow a beard. Grow a beard. It's the opposite of jumping the shark. Yep. Um <laughs> True, true. Um, I also think Farscape needs to be given a whole lot more credit than it's given. Um, and I think given four series and four seasons and two TV movies like Farscape, um, I, I think I would also be indicating that Firefly is one of the greats. Yeah. Because I absolutely love Farscape. Yeah. It, it's, it's definitely there. And I mean... You know, again, I understand series get canceled. That that happens. Again, just even having like the last, like you know what, this would have been like six more episodes to be a standard TV season. Mm -hmm. Like just 
just let this season finish off. <laughs> just that. Well, they started um, late too, didn't they? Yeah, I think it would had that kind of mid-season filler type thing like Buffy did. Yeah, um, which is unfortunate because I think had they filled out the season, I'd probably be singing a different tune. Yeah. I don't think a release of episode order was what damaged this. If I were to say anything about the release that damaged um, how well this did is the fact that it didn't get a full first. Yeah. Um, that's my personal observation anyways. And uh, for the most part, I agree. Uh, I know we've talked about this in earlier episodes. There was a few episodes like, yeah, this placement doesn't quite make sense with things we see in other episodes. Yeah. But, but overall, the show is episodal enough that it's not really hurting it too too much yeah not giving it its full season i think is the biggest thing uh and i think it's interesting because i think i know most of the cast if not all of it knows that potential as well mm. so a, a couple of things that um, I know have happened. I know that um, Nathan Fillion still compares everything he's in hmm. to his time on Firefly. Like, it, it is just that type of role for him. Uh, I know the whole crew, when the show was cancelled, um, they basically took that um, that button from uh, Out of Gas yeah. and, you know, and gave it to Whedon's like, you know, just call us when you're ready. <laughs> like, there's a lot of investment in this with the crew, with the cast. To this day, to my, as far as I understand it, like, I think if they wanted to make Serenity Two, Electric Boogaloo, that they wouldn't have an issue getting anyone there to do it. I mean, whether or not it'd be good is a different thing, but I think it would get done. <laughs> yeah. And then that just speaks to the the production value and the the clear there's a clear vision with where this was going. Mm -hmm. And to have everyone on board like that, it's uh, it's amazing. I mean, and the fans doing the same thing. Like Serenity got made because they released the DVDs, and the fans made sure that they knew it was wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a positive aspect of a fan campaign yeah um sometimes fan resurrected projects are things that should just have uh were made dead yes but this uh, time they made sure they knew everything about it <laughs> and they didn't want to change anything about it <laughs> yeah that's the biggest thing yeah yeah good series it's a shame cut too short um, I mean, at this point, I don't want them to bring it back anyways. No. Uh... <laughs> Especially with today's production company. I mean, I, and I don't want to really funnel too much more money into Joss Whedon's pockets. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. And that, I... Yeah. <laughs> I got... well, we're definitely going to be Following this re release, immediately after, bang bang, the Serenity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, which will be followed up in the Media Club, I believe. Yes. It'll be our second crossover. <laughs> What's our first one again? Cowboy Bebop. Oh, yes. Cowboy Bebop and Carol Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> we're, crossover we're... episodes, they're important. <laughs> Wait, are we are we talking about a series that should have had a second season and a series that shouldn't have been? Yes, yes, <laughs> that is exactly what we're doing here. <laughs> Release the Angela cut. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I'm pretty sure they came out and said that the Lost World was not purgatory. Yes, and then they made it purgatory, and oh, <laughs> the. Thanks for huddling around the second wall with us here tonight. 
I hope you enjoyed our discussion of the series Firefly. Please join us next time on the Media Club when we will discuss the movie Serenity. Again, please also comment, join us on social media or on our Discord. So we'd love to get your thoughts. And of course, if you like what we do, please share us around with your friends.